Hey friends, hope you're doing well. Today I'd like to discuss an issue with you and actually I hope that you come up with a solution which you can share with me. So what is the goal? My goal here was to do a neural network prediction, but not with one, but with two outputs. And I run into an issue regarding my error because I get an uh, none, so np.none error, and I would like to know why. And maybe you can help me with that. So let's go through what I did. So I imported the libraries, in this case TensorFlow. I read some data, which is publicly available. So if you want to download it, you can do that. And uh, then I have here a data set. And in this data set, I'd like to make predictions on not one, but actually two outputs. Meaning I have a price column here, as you can see, and this will be a normal regression problem, right? So I want to predict actually the price based on the other, in this case, features I have in my data set. So far, so good. But now, next to predicting the price, I also want to have another column, which I also want to predict. And this can be anything here, but uh, I, I was choosing uh, um, the, the number of cylinders, which is also a column in here. Uh, the first thing I did was I just checked uh, how much data is actually uh, missing in here, um, in this case as a percentage figure, and then I just dropped that data. Of course, you can also impute it if you want, but for now, that is not the, the real issue here, I guess. Then I just separated the columns into the numeric columns with the select D-types option and the other columns in here. And just make sure that I encoded the other columns, right? With this pd.categorical, there's also an option to do one-hot encoding, for instance, or using pandas.getDummy uh, functionality and so on. So all this is possible as well. In this case, this is kind of label encoding if you want. Um, so it might be an issue if you think about hierarchical uh, structures inside a column, uh, whether they exist or not. But for now, um, that's not really my main pain point here. Uh, but maybe you want to encode it differently. You can do that. The main point is that our neural network needs numerical columns. That's why I did that. And that's why I have as a result here now only numerical columns. So far, so good. And now... What I want is, as you can see here, I just checked the number of cylinders, which in this case is the number from zero to four. So we have five different cylinders in this case. So my prediction output for the cylinders will be a dense layer at the end with five outputs. And I'm using a softmax function just to ensure that I get prediction for one of the cylinders, right? Because this is a, a multi-label classification actually. From the price, on the other hand, I just use a normal dense function. Uh, you'll see that in a moment because it's just a regression problem. So then I just check the columns in here, and there's actually the column I want to predict, the number of cylinders, which is this one here, as well as the price, which is this one here. And then I just uh, split the data into train and testing, and I just made sure that the training, so the features, the really x values, do not contain the price in the cylinders. Those are only part of the y values in here. And I just used a tuple here and I converted them to NumPy. Uh, you can also use dot values if you want to do that, but I converted it into NumPy arrays. So then I have my shape just to make sure that I have enough in the input layer of neural network, just to make sure I get 24 inputs in here. So I check that. And um, what's always best practice is if you have data that you uh, normalize it, uh, there are various uh, options to do that. For instance, scan standard scalar and uh, normalize and other kinds of scaling methods in, uh, in a scikit-learn library, uh, or you can also use it directly from the data set. As you can see here, it's statistics. Uh, it gives you exactly the mean for each of the columns, and you can also then write your own function to simply subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation for each of the columns, and you also get a normalized data set for your features. That's also possible. So, Long story short, finally, then we build the model and we have here an input layer, which has a shape of 24 because we have 24 features. And then we have some dense layers in here. I use some activation function in here. I get some outputs here and uh, put it in a dropout just to have some regularization in here. And then finally, and that's the interesting part here, I have two outputs. The first one is for the price, which in this case is a dense layer without any activation function because it's a regression problem. And the second one is, in this case, a dense layer, but with five outputs. Remember, we have five different cylinders, so that's why I want to have five. And because it's a, a, a multi-class, um, in this case, a problem, it's then I'm using a softmax function here. And this also put on the last 
in this case on this last output layer. And all I did then was I created the model with the inputs and I have two outputs here, which in this case is specified by outputs and have those two outputs. And then I return the model. I just uh, create the model here using the function and I just take a look at the summary here and it just gives me that and also it's a really small model, right? But that's not, not really the, the point here. Now I have my model defined. Again, one more time, I checked the shape here, 24. This is fine, and I also checked the train shape just to make sure that actually training is the same in here. Then I compiled the model, and the way this works is, I had to look that up as well on the internet, uh, but the way that works is because we have two outputs, uh, that's why we have two different loss functions and also two different metrics. And we can do this using a dictionary, so the loss here for the price, uh, layer in this case is the mean squared error because it's a regression problem for the cylinders uh, It's actually um, Categorical cross entropy and I'm using sparse categorical cross entropy because the cylinders are not one hot encoded. That's why So I have not used uh, for instance tensorflow Keras, uh, too categorical That's why the cylinder is just zero one two three you have seen that and that's why I need to use a sparse categorical cross entropy to fit it correctly and then also for the metrics I'm using a dictionary here again for the price column here, uh, or for the price output, better say, I use here the root mean squared error, and for the cylinders I'm using the accuracy. And now all I need to do is actually training the model, and that's what I did here, model.fit, train x, train y, the epochs, and then the validation data, which is test x uh, scaled in this case, and test y, right? Also for train x scale. But then I run exactly in this issue, which you can see here. Now the training works, so I do not get uh, any problems regarding uh, any shapes which are wrong, anything like that. But as you can see here, my loss for the price is nan, and also for the cylinders is nan. And this continues. So um, Keras, on this case my neural network, is not really able to calculate the loss. And this is something which I do not really understand. And uh, this is where you come into play. So hopefully you can help me figuring out what did I do wrong here. Um, so or maybe you have already done this in the past to have a neural network, not with one, but with multiple outputs. And maybe you run into the same problem as I do here. And if so, please give me some hint or let me know what I can do, what I need to change in order to get a proper result here. Because I think this is really interesting to have multiple outputs for the same network. But of course, you would like to know how good is the network, right? And for that, for the training process itself, you need some kind of loss as well as then some kind of optimization based on the loss. So if you have some idea, then please share this with me uh, in the comments. Let me know. I already thank you for that. Otherwise, hopefully that was interesting to you in general. If so, please give this video a like and also please consider subscribing if you don't want to miss any additional videos on Python, Power BI, Tableau and other kinds of interesting data analyzation and data visualization tools. So thanks a lot, take care, and hopefully until the next video.